Fighting Neo Geo Max 330 Mega の劇的体験 Neo Geo System SNK Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SOT. I'm going to continue the series Neo Nostalgia, where I took a look at some of my favorite Neo Geo games on the AES and MVS, and they were taking a look at Top Hunter, Roddy and Kathy, developed by SNK, and obviously at least on the Neo Geo Worlds, why would it be on this playlist? It is a 2D side-scrolling action game with a multiplane setup, and it's one of the more unique games on this system. Before we get to find the other, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But I loved Top Hunter the first time I played it, and I've loved it ever since. It has the same sort of look and vibe of a Metal Slug game, except it's more of a beat em up than it is a run and gun game. It's got a really strange title, Top Hunter, Roddy, and Kathy, but you'll notice the hook right off the top is that your character has extremely long Stretch Armstrong style arms. Maybe you're not old enough to remember who Stretch Armstrong is, but that was one of the biggest toys in the 90s, and these guys right here have his arms but I just love this game it's beautiful to look at the soundtrack is amazing it is fun to play and this is one of the first games the SNK dubbed the 100 mega shock which was a hundred megabit cartridge size and considering that the biggest Super Nintendo game was like 50 megabits and this biggest Genesis game was I think smaller than that this is a massive amount of data to put on a cartridge at the time now obviously Neo Geo games with bank switching technology got much bigger as time went on but this in the home market looks spectacular and looks so far beyond what anything Nintendo or Sega could put on their hardware. It just looks spectacular. And right off the top, the biggest hook of this is that split plane. You can jump into the foreground or background, and you can fight in both directions too. If you jump at the wrong time, you take damage like I just did there. If you jump at the right time, you can actually land on your opponent and deal damage. So it's really a skill that you need to manage, understanding that screen space, moving backwards and forwards to avoid obstacles, and also attack different opponents. I love that. It's trying to do something a little bit different, and honestly, it feels like the side-scrolling version of the real route Fatal Fury games when they had that two-plane system going on as well. But visually, this game is just amazing. The way those sprites are scaling in the background as they come in and out on those boats, it just looks so much fun. The amount of detail in the sprite work and the background work is just dripping with charm. The artists on this game did a spectacular job of making it, and to me it's still one of the best looking non-fighting games or shmups on the system. Now I could have talked about, you know, something like Blue's Journey or something like Magician Lord, and I may still talk about those, but to me if I'm going to play one side-scrolling game on the Neo Geo, AES or MVS, it is going to be Top Hunter. It's got everything you want in a side-scrolling platformer slash beat-em-up that if you definitely enjoy the genre, Genre, you're going to enjoy this game immensely and you will see that it even has kind of that slug vibe going on too because you have different mechanical apparatus that you can ride around on now if there's one thing about the game if there's one strike i would give it and it really isn't that big of a deal is that until you get to the third stage in each world the bosses you encounter kind of just repeat themselves as either being a pirate or a dude with a cape i don't know their names i didn't look it up and honestly i don't really care that much i'm not in it for the names i'm in it for the fun but the boss encounters are all unique and specialized and they all look absolutely spectacular and they all have their own specific pattern on how you want to beat them you can't just hammer away with your fists you gotta pick things up in this game and throw it. It's a really fun extra little bit of layer going on that most side-scrolling games back in the day didn't have and the developers of SNK did an amazing job of making this game feel both familiar and unique all at the same time. But again, I think this game has a spectacular soundtrack, so go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and I'll come back and sing the praises of Top Hunter Roddy and Kathy Moore. Still a weird title, but it's a spectacular game and the soundtrack is fire. But enjoy! There's actual fire. See the joke?
Oh dear god, what in the hell is that thing? It's some sort of howler monkey slash abominable snowman, and it has a completely different graphical style than everything else in the game, and there's a few instances where they put monsters up on the screen that are both terrifying compared to the cartoony graphics in the game, and also just look slightly different and make you feel a little uncomfortable, at least they do to me. But like I mentioned earlier, and you listen to that soundtrack, it is amazing, and I love the mechanics of the boss fights here, and that wasn't actually a howler monkey, apparently it was a robot, and that's why it looks so weird, because you crush him with that stone and you can take his foot with you and throw it at somebody if you so want to this game is just creative it's always doing something new and different and putting something new in front of you to experience and because it was the quote-unquote hundred mega shock there's so many different enemy types and graphics types it is filled with different things to look at every single time and again the boss fights are really strategic i do love that you can't actually attack the boss with your fists but every time he hits the wall there rocks are going to fall on the ground and you need to wait for an opening to throw them at his head if you throw them at the wrong time you're just going to hit those plates that he's holding on to and it's going to be a whiffed shot and then he's just going to windmill around and you need to be really strategic there if i missed that shot it wouldn't have worked but i hit it and it's felt perfect and that's the great thing about top hunter is that when you're playing it and you're playing it well and everything's clicking it's just a ton of fun but i also love that each planet has so much diversity not only in the colorways but in the sprites and in what they're trying to show you all those floating islands in the backgrounds with the chains keeping the rocks together it's just a really beautiful thing to look at and even though this is definitely in the grand scheme of things of the neo geo a small cartridge size it is just filled with so much to look at i can't can't believe they were able to fit all of this into those hundred megabits it is amazing those dudes crawling around in the background how the sprites scale really properly and smoothly from the foreground to the background elements all of those trees at the top how those leaves are animating in the wind there it just has something going on in every square inch of the screen and it's always looking good and that's why i love this game so much and don't get me wrong we may very well still talk about magician lord because that's one of the earliest neo geo games and it's still a spectacular side scrolling game but like i said for me top hunter ready and kathy is what you want to play if you want to check out an amazing side scroller on the neo geo because there weren't that many for a 2D system, side-scrolling platform games are not its milieu. And there's definitely a lot of other things, obviously fighters and shmups that are going to have much more representation on the system. But I'm curious who's actually heard about this game before. Even in Neo Geo circles, it's not the game that's talked about the most, and that's just because the system's not known for these type of games. But I love it, but I'm curious, did you ever see this in arcades? Because this is a game that I only have experience with in the home console market. I never saw Top Hunter, Roddy and Kathy in an arcade floor. I'm sure it was somewhere, it just wasn't at my local arcade. But there are some Neo Geo games that I do love that I've never actually seen in arcades, only in my home collection. So I'm curious if you guys have ever seen it in arcades and if you know where there might be a cabinet for it somewhere well, we beat that boss there with our not metal slug metal slug and we're moving back on and again i just love everything the time of day is changing we have this windstorm in the background with that cow in the field and that fog coming in we even have an alien that abducts the cow again it's just reminding me of metal slug every time i play it with little details maybe that was intentional maybe it wasn't but i like to think it was and like i said earlier the only thing I don't love is that you have to keep fighting that pirate dude, but moving on to another boss fight, they're all absolutely epic and spectacular, and they are so much fun to play. The big hook on this one here, and I'm pretty sure that might be one of the dudes from Rise of the Triad. If you know what I'm talking about, leave me a comment down below. But he's going to come across the play field, and there's going to be one of those cylinders that you can punch and attack to blow up. And that's going to make it harder for you because you need to aim that shot perfectly. And the further in the fight you get, sometimes you're not going to get a single attackable pattern. Sometimes there's only going to be one up there that you can hit and the rest of them are going to be projectile balls being thrown at you. It's just really well designed that he drops those balls in both the foreground and the background. So you really do need to jump around and see what's going on. But every time you beat a boss, something awesome happens. You're going to see that this dirigible blimp not sure what it is kind of having a hindenburg moment here is going to go crashing down onto the ground but somebody ejects from that ship to the larger ship on top and has escaped but it just crashed it was amazing and i love to look at it but yeah that's top hunter roddy and kathy moving on to the ice planet each world is just so unique now we've got a snowman that we can just pick up and throw 
And the biggest thing about this game is that when I'm playing it, I'm always smiling. It's cute, it's colorful, the soundtrack is amazing and catchy, and that's what I want in a side-scrolling platform game. I need all of those elements to be working at once, and this game is a masterclass now to combine all those classic tropes of the side-scrolling platformer into a package that makes you just absolutely love it. And because it's one of the few platforming games on the Neo Geo, it's also great that it's one of the best games on the system, in my opinion. I'm sure people will debate me on that but it's how I feel about it but yeah I like want to know in the comments down below what do you think are you gonna play top hunter after this or are you gonna just kind of bypass it up I'm curious what you guys think but I will be back next week with another episode of Neo Nostalgia and now we have the real abominable snowman in the background there and he looks weird and kind of creepy like he's wearing a mask but yeah stay away from the snowman we'll see you next time guys bye bye